thought today I'd show you how to make a pneumatic snappy dragon puppet. I've got one here I made earlier. I'm going to show you how the dragon works and then show you how to make your own version of this puppet. We're using something called pneumatics to make our snappy dragon snap. Let's make him do it. I'm going to push down on the bottle and let's see what happens. Our snappy dragon's jaws open and close. So what's happening here? I've got a balloon in the dragon's mouth and the balloon's connected via a straw to this bottle. Now the bottle currently is filled with gases from the air and when I push the bottle down I'm going to compress those gases and squash them and force them through the straw into the balloon. And that's going to make the balloon inflate and that's going to open and close the snappy dragon's jaws. All you need for this are some very simple bits and pieces you've probably got around the house. So I'm going to put Snappy Dragon onto one side just now and show you how to make the first part of the model. And for that you're going to need um, an egg carton. You can use other uh, boxes or um, containers that have something like this with a hinge up and down. You can make your own version of this with things you have around the house. And the first thing I'm going to do is to make a hole for the straw to come through. You may need someone to help you with this at home. I've got some blue tack and a pencil. I'm going to think carefully about how I want my snappy dragon to work. I'm wanting these bits of ridges on top to be the snappy dragon's face and so this will be the lower part of the jaw. If you've got a bit sticking up like this bit in here you can just push that down. I want the hole to come in here, so my straw is going to be in the bottom jaw. And to do that, I'm going to put the blue tack behind the cardboard like this, and then just push my pencil carefully through. My fingers are out of the way. And that makes a hole big enough to put your straw. I've got a piece of recycled plastic straw, but you could use paper straw instead. My piece of straw needs to be long enough to go from inside Snappy Dragon's mouth all the way through to the, the bottle at the end. You can measure yours out to be the right size. That can come out for now. What I'm going to do now is attach my Snappy Dragon um, uh, straw to the balloon. Now, before we start, I'm going to make sure the balloon has been inflated. For two reasons. One, it makes sure there's no holes in the balloon, and secondly, you'll know yourself, when you want to inflate something, like a balloon, it's easy if it's been inflated before. That just stretches the balloon to make it easier when you push the air through from the bottle. I'm going to attach that with an elastic band. I'm pushing the straw through so I can feel it through, it's just here, in the long part of the neck of the balloon. Elastic band, and put that round a number of times. I want to make sure that the balloon is secured to the straw so it won't come off. It'll be under pressure when I'm pushing the bottle down. You could use some sellotape instead if you wanted to. Make sure that the straw isn't squashed by the elastic band and you haven't um, squashed the end. So I can see the straw is still going through there. At that point, I can put the straw through the hole I made earlier. And that's the first part of Snappy Dragon finished. Okay, we're all set to make the next part of our pneumatic Snappy Dragon model. For this we're going to need to attach our straw to our bottle. We're going to do that using the balloon, the second balloon, and an elastic band. The good news is there's no need to inflate this balloon. We're going to cut it and use it as a connector between the bottleneck and the straw. We want to make sure we've got an enclosed system here so the gases in the air are forced from the bottle through the straw and inflate our balloon. Now, we found that a piece of balloon 
approximately six centimeters from the neck of the balloon to where we cut is a good enough size to connect our straw to our bottleneck. So I'm going to take my ruler and pencil and just mark on a six centimeter mark from the balloon neck to where the balloon starts to balloon out. I'm using a round balloon. You can try different types of balloon. I'm going to cut along here to give a good size connecting piece. I can discard that part of the balloon now. You could ask someone to help you cut it if you need to. At that point, I'm going to attach in the same way as before, attach our balloon to the straw. I want about two centimetres of straw poking through into the balloon. Let's just check that. Yes, that seems fine. I'm now going to take the elastic band and wind that round, keeping the straw free inside the balloon neck and not compressing the straw with the elastic band. A few winds around should be fine. You can use some tape if you want to, to tape the balloon to the straw. And just check, I've got the balloon sticking out, so the straw sticking out into the balloon neck. At that point, I can bring the bottle closer and I can stretch the balloon skin over the neck of the bottle. Again, you can tape that or hold it, give it a good old stretch over so it's gripping the bottle neck like so. Straws in position. Let's squeeze down and see what happens. Yes, look, the jaws are slowly opening and closing as I compress the gases in the bottle. That's our pneumatic system at work. You might want to tape that, as I said, it's up to you entirely. We find it's quite a good fit if you stretch that over. So um, that's the basic model done. At that point, you might like to decorate your snappy dragon to make it look like a dragon or other animals. It's up to you entirely. I've used some polystyrene balls, buttons and googly eyes and some felt teeth. But again, it's up to you entirely, whatever you have to hand. If you don't have any polystyrene balls, perhaps get hold of some paper, scrunch the paper up, take a second piece and put that over to make an eye. You could use pen or paint then to uh, decorate and attach that to your model and make the teeth from anything you have to hand. I also mentioned that if you don't have a, an egg box around, you can use other containers. This is an Easter egg box, a polystyrene a hot potato box, or a burger bun box. You might have some transparent salad containers of a similar kind, or just stick two boxes together with a piece of tape to make a hinge in that way. Now, you might find depending on the box you use, that sometimes there's a problem because the jaws open too wide and they won't close again. If that's the case, don't worry. All you'll need to do is take some string and make some holes carefully using the blue tack in the box. You want four holes in total. I'm going to do quickly with some blue tack, make some holes there with my pencil. I'm going to thread some string through those holes to allow the jaw to open, but not open too wide. You don't always do this, it doesn't always need doing, just sometimes. And if I thread the string or twine or elastic band, if you want to choose some elastic through, you'll see then how you can stop this happening. What I would do here, how wide do I want the jaws to open? I think about that wide is fair enough. I would then tie a knot in the string at the right length. Let's just test that. That's okay, a bit wider perhaps, you can loosen the string. You'd have more time than I have to do that. You can adjust the string, that's about right, and cut the ends off. And then you've got your snappy dragon's jaws opening and closing to make your puppet. Hope you enjoy trying this. 
We'd love to see pictures of your snappy dragons or other animals on our um, social media feed. So over to you. Hope you enjoy yourselves doing that.